What is up, riders? It's your boy, Hawkillies, and it is one of those things that I do where it is 11.09 p.m. right now, December 30th, right before New Year's Eve, and I was like, oh, I need to write my goals down. And uh, just to preface this, this whole episode is just going to be me, myself, and I. Um, I do this thing with goals going into each new year where I like analyze the goals I had last year and then I look over and check them and see how I did and every all that stuff and I sit down and write a big list of 10 goals for the next year and I kind of wanted to do that here on the podcast I don't know why this podcast feels really intimate to me just the the conversations I have with other guests but also like this time I take before and after the podcast to kind of talk to you a little bit it feels like now that the youtube has gotten to where it is and we'll talk about that in a second like that's this big bubble or big piece of the onion and you keep pulling back layers of the onion and as we get deeper and deeper the audience for it gets smaller and smaller but also i feel like the intimacy and the love and the uh just relationship creator to audience gets like deeper and deeper you go and at least for me right now because this podcast is the newest thing or hell i'll I'll say it straight it's the smallest thing that i do currently um it feels the it feels the most close-knit like the people that are listening to this podcast uh on the monthly really want to know my opinions or my guests opinions on that kind of stuff so i i i feel like i should come on here and do my little goals analysis recap of 2023 and then the goals for 2024 because i didn't hit all of them this year i was looking over them and i noticed that i didn't hit all of the goals this year which isn't great you know but it happens i tried my best and it happens it's things that we we check and we move on um so i'm gonna start by like giving you guys my 2023 goals and we'll go into them a little deeper than I probably ever have in my mind. Uh, I've got like all my analytics pulled up and everything and a couple points I want to hit for each topic. But just right off the bat, the 2023 goals, number one is 10K subs on YouTube. Um, Speaking of, I hope this encourages you to make a goals list. I'm going to be everywhere, by the way. My mind is so bouncing off the walls. I have so much to do (laughs) tonight. And I was like, let me just record this podcast real quick. Um, so if this inspires you to write a list of goals, go ahead and post them and, and tag me in it. I'd, I'd love to see everyone's goals. That's something I really think makes the new year enjoyable is like giving yourself this roadmap because you can't make it to a destination if you don't have a map, if you don't know where you're going. Um, so sorry, <laughs> back to the 2023 goals. My goals this year, 2023, number one was 10K subs on YouTube, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I started the year at like 2,200, something like that. And I'm looking at it now. And as of this moment, we are at 10,313. And that is wild to me because the time it took between like 9,900 was far longer than the time it took to get to 10 from 10,000 to 10,300 like once I got to 10,000 it just didn't stop which is great by the way shout out to all the new subscribers of the YouTube uh but yeah the, I feel like that last hundred subscribers was just daunting it took it felt like it took like almost two or three months um and one of the things that I've talked about repeatedly about this goal is that it should have been far far earlier if i i look at last year's and i look at like the projected number that we should have had um i should have hit 10,000 around may july ish but for some reason around may july may mainly i like stopped posting as much i've from may uh 10th to july sorry to june 28th may 10th to june 28th so a month and a half or almost two months at that point, I posted one video. I posted one video. And then after that, things just really slowed down up until like the end of August, they kind of picked up again. Um, and that was just purely from like 
you know, depression, life getting busy and all this stuff. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't hit that goal of like being more consistent, which is not a goal on here. I'm just bringing it up being more consistent as I wanted to be on YouTube. So I felt like we could have hit 10k sooner. We could probably even hit uh, 15k this year. If I really, really gave it my all, which I don't feel like I did when it comes to creating videos for the channel, but, uh, we hit that goal, you know, 10,313 is the number I'm staring at right now. So I think that's, I think that's really, really feels good. Um, I also said we were at 2000 last year. I lied. Uh, sorry. At the beginning of, at the beginning of the year, we were at 8,000 last year on its own. So this year I made 2,700 subscribers last year, 2022, I made 5,600 subscribers, which is why I was like projected. It should be like the middle of the year when we hit 10,000, but it wasn't that. And that's fine. Um, number two is a cosplay shoot. I wanted to do a cosplay photo shoot and I finally got to do that for my birthday in May where I dressed as a DGP contestant and I thought it was great. I got my sister. We went out to the old LA zoo and took pictures around there. There's some beautiful scenery around there and uh, got some good shots. And I, I, I kind of really enjoyed doing that. In fact, I did like two or three more cosplays throughout the year. And like, I want to do more this year. Just, it makes me feel so good there's a um i told the story on the keza podcast but there was an anime convention i went to and i was dressed as luffy from one piece and the amount of people that were just like hey captain how's it going captain hey captain that's my captain it just it was just like oh yeah this is this is this feels great this is community i went up to a cosplayer who i follow and uh have followed for a very long time and asked to take a picture with her. And she's like, yeah, sure. And then she took a picture and she's like, I love your outfit. And then like, she was probably just being very nice. It was an Amazon bought Luffy cos cosplay that the like straw hat was all crushed up on because it came in a paper bag. But just that like little compliment, she'll never know how much it means to me. But just that little compliment, like honestly was like, yeah, this is a good cosplay. And now I look back at those pictures and I feel so confident in myself, in my, in my body image. Cause like, it's 2023. We all have body dysmorphia. I am not. I am also prone to that. I'm not um, invincible to body dysmorphia. But I look back on that day and I'm like, man, I am. I am. I am a looker. That felt good. I felt good about myself in those pictures. Um, so full cosplay photo shoot did that one. Number three, more collaboration and partnerships. Do I feel like I did more collaboration? Aside from the Toku Awards at the beginning of the year, where I got a ton of great creators together to present the Toku Awards, I do not feel like I did more collaboration than the year before. But what I do feel like is I did more meaningful collaborations. I helped a lot of friends with their videos, um, even behind the scenes and in front of the camera. I've helped a lot of friends and uh, collabed on a lot of videos. I had more friends on my channel. I just learned like towards the end of last year that like you can't trust everyone. And I've always been like a whole, <laughs> a high tide raises all ships type of guy. And I'm still like that. Don't get me wrong. I wish success on everybody, but I have to safeguard my passion, my heart, because that at the end of the day is what this is, this whole experience is a little piece of my heart that I'm letting everyone into. I'm letting you guys look into or listen to or or be a part of. It's it's so hard to put yourself out there on the line. But when you do it with friends, it is one of the most rewarding things I could ever think of. The collabs where I am just don't have to worry about a thing because I know these people and I trust these people are some of the most fun things I've ever done. But especially towards the start of my, you know, I guess you can call it career, the start of this endeavor, I was just doing collabs to do collabs a lot of the times and it felt hollow. And there are definitely some that like I came out of and not didn't feel didn't feel great about wasn't proud of. And I was like, uh, maybe I'll promote this one a little less because I don't really want people to hear this or I don't really want people to see this. So like maybe I won't go that far with it and I and I really tried to shake this fe that feeling this year and I think I did I think I did I think you can go through every video I posted this year and if you see a face 
of someone in that video know that I 100% stand by that person and my decision to put that person in the video and platform them um, because I think that my audience will like them, be entertained by them, connect with them. Um, and I also just genuinely trust them and their ideals, um, which is like a big thing to say. Like, <laughs> let's let's roll back this a second. It's like a big thing to say to like trust someone with your ideals. And at the end of the day, we're all entertainers. If you want to be entertained without all the ideals in it, then you can do that to a point. You can watch a YouTube video like the writer recap and not be like, oh, well, I didn't want politics, but there's politics in this. But the writer recap is like a terrible example because there is politics in the writer recap. Um, it's just it's just it just happens. But the writer recap is just commentary on everything. Um, so like bad, bad example aside. I I trust the people who are in the videos because I've built up a relationship enough with them to trust them behind the scenes off camera that you guys aren't seeing that's off Twitter. Um, and I, and I truly am invested in those people. So that one, I think I can cross off as being done more collaborations and partnerships, partnerships, not so much. I think my sponsorship value really fell through the floor this year because of how little videos I did comparatively to the year before. And, um, how little views I got to compared to the year before. I say little views. It's a lot of views. It's just not the same as before. I'm looking at it right now. It's 20% less than 2022. The views view count for this year is 655,000 views all across the channel, which is not a small number. Don't get me wrong, but it is still 20% less than when I was a smaller creator the year before. Um, so I am not very sponsors don't look at me as like a, a hot ticket item as they did coming out of the year before um bench 225 pounds that did not happen <laughs> 225 pounds if you don't know is two 45 pound weights on each side because the bar weighs 45 and 45 times 5 225 um and i was trying to do that all year and i got to 205 uh or 210 whatever i'll yeah i think it's 205 I think I got to 205 and I needed 20 more pounds and I, for the life of me, couldn't do it. And then, uh, about three weeks ago, I got injured. Uh, it's, they think it's a torn ACL at this point. I, I did an MRI. I'm still waiting for it to come back, but I'm basically like hobbling around, can't do legs. And a lot of, it gets in your head. I, I just started going back to the gym like last week or this week. And I definitely am lifting a lot less than I was. And so I tried like one last time to hit 225 and I could not do it. So that bench did not happen this year. Uh, Cross that off as something I didn't get done this year. But, you know, next year, 225 is way open, depending on how long it takes for me to get back in the right mindset for that. Um, number five, hire a video editor. And I'm going to pair this with number six because I... They weren't supposed to be one goal, but they ended up becoming the same kind of goal. Number five is hire a video editor. Number six is monetize the clips channel. I hired a video editor for the clips channel. Kaiju Carl, shout out to him. One of the best people I know. Dude is fire with editing. Dude, like he's so nice. Um, and he took over the clips channel. I want to say like two or three months ago. And one of my things for the clips channel is I strictly wanted that to be an ad revenue thing that we can take videos from stream, throw them on there with kind of minimal, minimal editing. That's why a lot of the streams towards the end of the year, you saw the beginning of them was like, Hey, let's talk about the news in Toku because I can throw that up on the clips channel and name it the most searchable title possible. And it would get views. And that's what I kind of want from the clips channel is if like, Hey, I missed the Twitch stream one night, but I really want to know what Hawk thinks about the newest common writer. Or I really want to know what Hawk thinks about, um, this new toy that's been announced. You can go to the clips channel and that'll be up there for you or this newest, you know, uh, drama, whatever's happening. Um, you can go to the clips channel and that'll be up there for you. And that was my whole goal with it all year, but I didn't really get around to paying that much attention to it until I think October is when I started hiring Carl. Um, and my thing was I, I wanted it monetized purely through AdSense. I didn't want to activate memberships or anything like that. I don't want the money from that channel to 
to come directly from the consumer, the viewer, you guys, um, because I think that you guys are monetized too much and corporations need to pay more. That's just who I am. <laughs> Corporate corporations need to pay more for entertainment and we need to stop trying to nickel and dime every single person that wants to view a YouTube video. Um, I wholeheartedly believe that. So we are as of right now, a uh, thousand hours, a thousand watch hours away from monetizing that channel. But when I hired him two months ago, I think we were about 18. Um, is that right? No, sorry. We were about 2000 hours away and now we're a thousand hours away. So a thousand hours in, in two months isn't bad. Isn't bad at all. Uh, so we're getting there. I think, I think it's definitely going to happen sooner rather than later. Uh, and I, I love working with Carl. So that's going to keep happening. Um, hire a video editor checked off monetizes the clips channel, not checked off, but like well on the way to happen. Um, get some power Rangers on stream for this one. I, I really, I remember writing it. And I really meant the Toku Awards. I really wanted Power Rangers at the Toku or on the Toku Awards. And in a way, I did get two. I got DJ Rivers, who plays TK Johnson in the uh, Shattered Past and Bloodline for the Grid. And I got Colin K. Bass, uh, who is, plays the Omega Ranger in Shattered Past and is the dude that created Shattered Past, um, these two indie fan films. So... I, I, I like that. I, I didn't get like someone who's been in the Power Rangers show, not for lack of trying. Trust me, there was a lot of emails sent out, a lot of cold emails sent out. A lot of them never returned. Um, so not for lack of trying. I'm I confident I can do it this year if I try harder. Um, but it's just one of those things with networking. And I think if I would have went to Power Morphicon the year before, it would have happened. I've because because like Power Rangers are very willing to. Oh, uh, there was also that that little thing that happened during the year, that that thing that happened for a few months when all the big Power Ranger stuff was happening. Uh, it's the actor strike. The actor strike happened, so like none of them could actually do any of this stuff. But I feel like I probably could have got a Cosmic Fury Ranger on had that not happened. But uh, we support the actors wholeheartedly. Um, glad all that stuff came to an end. And they got what they were asking for. So get some Power Rangers on stream. Uh, we had two indie Power Rangers next year. Let's hope to get more. Number eight, introduce new fans to Tokusatsu. This is like the broadest thing that I have no measurable metric for. But I do know that a lot of people told me, hey, I started watching Kamen Rider because of you. I started watching Super Sentai or Ultraman because I found your YouTube video and any YouTube video and it interested me and I started watching it or because I found your Twitch stream. I stumbled into this Twitch stream. I have people from high school who watch my Twitch stream and are now like, dude, I love Kamen Rider Geats. And that is like music to my fucking ears. I love that. So uh, that that success Success on that one. Introduce new to fans of Toku. Number eight. Number nine. Be on a panel at a convention. As the year wound down, I did not think this was going to happen. Uh, Japan World Heroes went happened, and I was offered to do the Ultraman um, Dyna, I believe. It was Ultraman Dyna panel. Like As I was there, I walked in, and I'm standing around, and someone who runs it that I'm friends with comes up to me and says, hey, would you like to do the Ultraman? Oh, Gaia. It was Ultraman Gaia. Sorry, not Dyna. Um, They're like, hey, would you like to do the Ultraman Gaia panel? And I stopped and really thought about it for a second, and I was like, I know absolutely zero about Ultraman Gaia, but my friend right here, Thomas Jujubee, does know Ultraman and like Ultraman. So Thomas ended up doing the panel. Um, in the time leading up to it, he was doing like research on Gaia, and he found out that he knew way more than he thought he did, not just about Gaia, but about Gaia's actor. So to see one of my friends go up there and do that and be next to an actual tokusatsu hero and be able to like talk to them back and forth and ask all these questions that's on their mind and really for <clears throat> i don't want to like this is going to be a weird thing but like roll with me on this so ultraman gaia go on red and common rider gaim were at this convention and I do feel like Ultraman Gaia had probably the least interaction with fans or the least fans 
at this convention. Um, I saw there was multiple times when there was like big lines for Go on Red and for Kamen Rider Gaim, but nobody for Ultraman Gaia. So to be in that panel room and see his face light up for how many people were in that panel room and to see his face just smiles the whole time. Thomas is asking him questions. It was like a really special moment and I'll never forget that. Um, he also had like this, these moments with fans that I saw uh, a father brought his son and they both got their Ultraman like heads signed. And as they're walking away, like the son is just gleaming just beaming with joy like jumps up that he got this Ultraman head sign and the dad's like super happy and I got into uh, Tokusatsu as a whole because my stepdad was really into Godzilla and Power Rangers and like seeing that reminded me of that that bond that I have with my stepdad so it, it made me it made me feel great uh, I don't know <laughs> so be on a panel at the convention sorry uh I'm like I said, my mind is like a rail train going different ways. That doesn't make sense. Uh, it's late at night. Bear with me. But Anime Pasadena, I was asked to be on a Toonami fan panel where we talked about the history of Toonami. And I was like, I watch Toonami. I love Toonami. I know a bit about Toonami. Let me jump on this show. Shout out to Anime Pasadena for having me on my first panel um, in, I believe it was November of this year. I walked in that room and my friend uh, Jimmy the Geek greeted me and walked me up to the table and he's like, all right, here's where you guys are going to be. And I saw a place card in the center of the table next to all these other place cards. Everyone else has like a full name, by the way, and place card right in the middle just says Hawkillies. And I swear to you, I could I I cried. I, I could have like just burst into tears. I had to hold it in because I'm like, all right, our panel's in a little bit. I got I got to get ready for this. Don't really know what to do with my hands, but we'll figure it out. But like I seeing my name on that stage uh, is something that I've wanted since I first attended San Diego Comic-Con in 20, 2010, I believe. The summer of 2010, I went to San Diego Comic-Con and I just sat in Hall H all day. I only had a one-day pass. And I was watching all these people, all these movies, all these big movies up there, all these big movie stars. The first time the Avengers assembled was on that stage in front of me. And I was like, man, it would be really cool to have my own panel. And then I did San Diego Comic-Con for a few years after that. And I was like, I can do panels here for sure. Like all these writers, all these artists, all these, all these people have panels. Like I have to have something that's panel worthy. I have to be able to create something that's panel worthy. And I did this year and that's cool to me. <laughs> and that was like, not only a goal for 2023, that was like a goal in my life 10 times over again. So that felt really good. Um, number 10 is be proud of everything I create. And I put that there solely because I wanted to be proud of everything I created, but I know I never will be. It's just the curse of being me. My mind actually will not let me be proud of anything, <laughs> like anything I ever create. I will always watch it back and be like, oh, I could have did this better. Could have did that better. But I put it there to remind myself to like not be hard on myself all the time. Um, and obviously I failed at that one. I think I failed 10 times over on that one. But I, 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 uh, I put it there as a reminder, which is good, you know. Uh, we fail, but we keep going. We try our hardest. And that brings us to the 2024 goals. What are my goals going into next year as a content creator, as a tokusatsu? Uh, I, I, everyone's like, they hate this term. I'm like, whatever about it. It's fine. As a tokusatsu influencer, as a YouTuber, as someone who wants this to be their whole thing, what are my goals in 2024? Well, number one is to post 50 videos on the main channel this year i posted 36 so next year 14 more videos to round out to 50 videos almost one a week with a few weeks uh off obviously it's a few weeks we'll have multiple videos but uh 50 main channel videos and you may be like hawk well why isn't it 20,000 subscribers why isn't it 15 100,000 i feel like after 10 
each milestone is still a milestone, but it doesn't become that big milestone again until a hundred thousand. And if I hit that next year, like, wow, I just saw Este hit that and Este just got his uh, YouTube play button, which is like an absolute dream of mine. It's been a dream for years, um, even before I started this channel. It's been a dream to have like my own YouTube play button. It's just such a cool thing to have. So 100,000 is like obviously one of the ultimate goals, but I don't. <clears throat> I don't know. Maybe it's lack of confidence. I don't believe in myself that much to get a hundred thousand next year. And I don't, um, I listen. I was listening to someone say, uh, it was a streamer that I like named Ludwig. He said, don't base your goals off of other people. So like metric goals, like viewership or subs or, you know, Twitch subscribers or Toku trash subscribers. Those are all based on other people. I can't force you to hit the subscribe button. I can't force you to go over to tokutrash.tv and get a membership for $5 or $10 if you want the more spicier stuff. I can't force anyone to do that. But what I can do is make sure I upload 50 videos, make sure I stream, edit, and put out 50 videos for the main channel because every single one of those videos is a lottery ticket, not only for someone to find me and decide they like me and like my content, but also for the YouTube algorithm to decide that like, oh, we like this content. We're going to push it out to everyone because that's happened a few times this year. And it has uh, literally carried the channel some months of like a video from like eight months ago or two years ago, blowing up all of a sudden and getting 30,000 views in a month out of nowhere. Um, number two is monetize the clips channel, which, as I talked about earlier, is very, very possible to do. Um, and I think it will happen. <laughs> number two is an easy one. I just put it on there. I'm like, hey, you're already on track. Keep that up. I think that's good. Um, number three, say yes more. I this happened the other day, but there I was presented with an opportunity from a friend to do something really cool that I can't talk about yet. Um, to do something really cool. And at first I couldn't see how I fit into that slot. If that makes sense, he was explaining it to me and I was like, yeah, I, did, I just don't think that's a me thing. And then a few days later, after thinking about it more and more, I kept going back to it. I was like, man, but I, I, I could do this. I could do this there. I can, I can make it do, I can make it go about it this way. And I hit him back up and I said, hey, is this still available? And I got hit with the ever uh, terrifying no. I lost an opportunity that would have been a huge opportunity for the channel because I didn't say yes. Because in the moment, I couldn't see my value to that thing. When the whole reason he was asking in the first place is because he saw my value value to that thing that I couldn't see myself. And so saying no made me miss an opportunity. And this happened, like I said, just recently, like a week and a half ago. Um, so number three is say yes more. Even if I don't think I'm ready, even if I don't think that's kind of my thing, my style, I think I am confident enough in my abilities that I've can bring value to any of those situations. Uh, I'm not talking about like the, the convention with Thomas where I'm like, Oh, I don't know Ultraman guy. I legitimately don't know Ultraman guy. I can bullshit my way through that. But also I think it would be much more uh, entertaining and informational for the people there. If someone who knew that did it, uh, I'm not talking about things like that, but I am talking about things where I just genuinely, second guess myself and my value to this thing that other people want me a part of. Um, so say yes to more. That's number three. Number four is diversify streams and videos. You're like, wow, Hawk, this is a lot of like content stuff. You're correct. This is my content goals. Yay. <laughs> there's like, there's more in here than content, but like most of them are content based. Um, diversify streams and videos, pretty self-explanatory. I want to branch out this year a little more. Tokusatsu is great. Uh, I've talked about many times. I feel there's a ceiling on Tokusatsu in terms of YouTube content. Um, uh, when I say Este hit a hundred thousand subscribers, he is a Power Rangers YouTuber. 
trust me, my Power Rangers videos far and away get more views than my Super Sentai videos, than my Kamen Rider videos. But I, I think I want to talk about more Japanese media. And there's obviously one big glaring one in anime that is just massively overcrowded on YouTube. The anime tube scene on YouTube. But I think I can bring something different and special to it. Uh, and I think I'm entertaining. I think I have value in that way. Going back to number three. Um, so diversify YouTube videos that way. Also diversify YouTube videos. And, and then I want to do more scripted stuff or at least more off stream stuff. I think I do really well on those. And last year I did not feel as confident going into the year of like, oh, people are, aren't going to watch these. Now I realize at least when I jump off stream and I just talk to the camera straight up and I put video over it and edit it really well, people are interested in that stuff. And so I, I like to do that and I want to do more of that. I love the stream videos. Trust me, writer recap's not going to stop. That's I writer recap is probably the number one thing I get asked about that. It, that will be back in full force this year with some differences, um, but that'll be back in full force this year. Uh, other videos like that you guys love the uh, I really want to do like a common writer pink tax video. If you watch the stream recently, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you know what the pink tax is, you know what I'm talking about, but I, w I would like to do more off stream videos. Um, and it's, that's all about finding time to do that stuff and edit that stuff down. Um, and then diversify streams. I want to play games. I want to play games on stream and not just, I want to play games on stream. I want to play games on stream and be able to maintain an audience while I'm playing games. I have tons of friends who like now are pull the same numbers as me playing games as I do talking about tokusatsu, which is amazing. I love talking about tokusatsu. Um, but I notice as soon as I switch over to a video game or even Ultraman, the numbers plummet. And one of my ultimate goals is to like be a Twitch partner. I think that's a really big deal in my mind. Uh, and you need numbers for that. It's, it's, I know I said before, I didn't want to base my goals off of people, external people. Um, but that's just a tried and true thing of content creation. Like my inherent value to the internet is tied to those numbers. Um, so I would really like to get a good footing in being able to play games and get an audience off of that and diversify in that direction as well. Number five is table at a convention table at a convention. I think I, uh, was really gung ho about Toku Trash as a brand when I first started it. When I made the logo and everything, I was like, I'm going to be a clothing guy. I'm going to make Toku Trash clothing. That's what it's going to be. And then I found a bunch of other incredible clothing designers uh, in the Tokusatsu sphere, like the uh, the Al Combo, like Ringatori, like K20 Customs, and I was just like, uh, or like, and like RDX. Uh, store and I was just like oh I'm not as talented as these people so why would I even try <laughs> but also one of the things that I wanted to do while making Toki Trash a clothing brand was put out things that I like put out things that I would wear and I I've put out a few shirts that I've definitely worn on stream and worn around and I, I enjoy that style so I think there's a spot for me there and if I were to table at a convention I, th I would definitely bring some Toku Trash merch. Um, I would also like to present myself as sort of a cosplayer or influencer or YouTube in that style and have the whole like a uh, banner set up and everything. I don't know who will come see me. I don't know if anyone will. I've been in situations in other industries where I was tabling for things and nobody stopped by and I had to, had to watch a gigantic line of someone far more uh, established than me. Uh, do their thing and get a big old line and I'm just kind of like the line entertainment of like hey how's it going um, but I I think I think I want to do that and I would love to table at a convention at least once and kind of figure it out feel it out and uh, try to add to this toku trash brand because when it started I really wanted it to be and when I started YouTube in general I really wanted it to be sort of like an IGN or a kind of funny that sort of group conglomerate of tokusatsu and those groups are kind of on their way out it's like the rooster teeth the kind of funnies you can see them plateauing or slowly declining um 
And I don't think that's like where the internet is anymore in terms of that style of content or those people. But I don't think Tokusatsu has had those yet um, or has gone through that yet. So I think having a group like that would be really beneficial or really fresh take on this content creation tokusatsu thing uh but i also know that like hey it's hard the we did this whole thing doesn't really make money it doesn't it's not a full-time job or anything like an ign would be or any of those places so there's not really there's a lot of burnout a lot of turnover especially and you can see it in toku tubers a lot of turnover so what well, as when i started toku trash that's what i kind of wanted it to be but i am feeling more comfortable in squeezing that circle down to just myself and a collaborator or two that I bring in every now and then, um, like Gilly who designed, uh, the shirts or a few shirts for Toku trash. Um, uh, meta Lucy, uh, or common writer meta on YouTube, not YouTube, sorry, Twitter. <laughs> That's Calvin. Calvin designed the, uh, not Shinobi shirt. That kind of stuff. I love bring, bringing people in like that and to have to help me out with ideas and put them to paper. Uh, but I've I really enjoy the idea of Toku Trash being like my personal brand um, that I don't have to be the face of, if that makes sense. Like I ha I'm the face of Hakili's. That's who I am. But then Toku Trash is the separate thing to where if you don't know who Hakili's is, you can still know what Toku Trash is as a brand. Uh, and then there's this podcast, which is just my podcast, which is fine. I, I don't, I don't claim to have it all figured out, but I'm, I'm getting it put together in my mind. <laughs> uh, so number five was table at a convention. Number six, invest in what slash who invests in you. And the what slash who is misleading, but the what is basically the content that invests in you, the content that people want to see, the content that I feel most invested in, and then the people that invest in me and the people that I feel invested in. And this goes for everything from collabs to not arguing with random no profile picture people on Twitter that don't follow me that somehow find like every single one of my tweets and just want to jump in and be like, um, actually, you're wrong about this or um, actually, this guy's a fucking idiot because uh, that happens to me so much. And it happened to me less this year because I tried to stay out of more. I realized, oh, I don't have to reply to everything because I don't have to reply to people that aren't invested in me. I still got caught a couple times. I, I got to be honest. I still got caught a couple times. <clears throat> There's one in specific that like so blatantly sticks out of my mind. The Hakili's drama of the year, I feel like, was <clears throat> when Kiki Palmer got into it with her husband. I think now husband again. Um, Kiki Palmer went to an Usher concert and went dressed up like she was going on a night out and Usher was like dancing on her or something. And Kiki Palmer's husband retweeted a video of that and said, it's the outfit though. You a mom. And I watched as the in this kind of sparked a big thing on the internet. Um, and I can, I, I feel like I presented it as a joke, which is a bad way to put it. What I saw happening on the internet was people posting pictures of women dressed however they wanted to be and say, it's an outfit though, you a mom. And this was like night out club clothes or this even extended to like clothes of women in a job that they that women aren't usually known for, if that makes sense. Or if society doesn't perceive that women can do that job, women were dressed for that job and it was like, and people were posting, it's the outfit though, you a mom with pictures of that. And it was this very feminist message this very feminist woman empowerment message of like you can literally dress and do however whatever you want because you're a mom not in spite of you being a mom because you're a mom and it was this very powerful strong message and i saw that happening and i was like oh let me take this back to tokusatsu so i got a grabbed a picture of the sentai special of the mother's sentai special with the three moms dressed as super sentai cuz i was like this is this is incredible they're dressed as super sentai and they're moms they can be superheroes and moms that's exactly what this message is or has become after everyone like 
put down the Kiki Palmer thing because the Kiki Palmer's husband said it in a derogatory way. Everyone else took it and was like, hey, you can be anything. You're a mom. So I posted that with that. And a lot of people got it. And then out a couple hours later, I saw a reply. I think I was at night and I was very tired. I saw a reply. Uh, yes, because I woke up the next morning. and This was all popping off. So I saw a reply at night and I was very tired. And it said, this is disgusting. And I replied to it, someone that didn't follow me at all. And I was like, is it like, what about it is disgusting? Or did you just not understand it? Did you not get the joke? Which I probably shouldn't have presented it as a joke because the more I think about it, the more it wasn't a joke. It was like this empowerment message. Um, And this turned into a whole thing about me being sexist and everything. And best believe I got hella defensive and I went after everyone. I, uh, everyone that was like, I woke up and some person was like, uh, I always knew how Achilles was weird and I'm glad everyone else is saying it. And then there was a bunch of replies to that, to things that like w- either didn't matter to this situation or things that I was specifically right about that other people would then come in and back me up that I was right about. And this group of people would not admit they were wrong. Um, and so this this is like a three day long thing. I got a death threat from this group of friends or this person in this group of friends that originally called me out. And I was like, Hey, death threats are bad. So like, is, are you guys going to talk to this guy? And all of a sudden that didn't matter. The death threat didn't matter. And I like, that was just this big eye opening experience of like, man, stop, stop, stop giving these people your time. They will never invest in you. They will never be invested. They just want to create this drama. They just want to be the the people on the top of this mountain. And I don't need to be that. Um, and I think what the cap on it all really is that uh, I the person I found this is uh, there was a specific group of people, group of friends that I had found a few days earlier them talking about on uh on their twitter account them talking about how they needed to get rid of me because they were tired of listening to my takes about ultraman and if that doesn't feel like the most premeditated thing <laughs> so after i saw that then i was like oh i i fell for this i 100 percent fell for this trap uh and i'm still blocked by like a ton of people because of that day um but i was like 100 percent fell for that trap so don't invest in people who don't invest in you. Like I said, collaboration wise, uh, everything down from the people you spend, you spend your free time with all the way down to the people who randomly find a tweet that pops off. Uh, number seven is three different sponsors. I want three different sponsors for the year or uh, to be sponsored by three different things for three different videos for the year. Bai is like my number one sponsor. I absolutely love them. The things that they have done for me and my videos and my family cannot be understated. Um, they have, they're a fantastic partner and I did fail them a little bit this year. I didn't do a video every month. Like I was planning to do, like we had talked about doing, um, it was more like every other month. And so I, that probably hurt that partnership a little bit i hope that it didn't we'll see in 2024 um but i also want three new sponsors in they don't have to be like monthly sponsors or like sponsors that i use every single month uh just three new sponsors and that also will force me to send more cold emails because those work companies like cold emails and they like smaller creators because they have more tight-knit audiences Um, So three different sponsors for that one. Number eight, be more organized. I don't know how I can put this on my desk right now. I'm looking at a um, Urataros figure. I'm looking at a stack of Kemi cards. I'm looking at a stack of Kemi cards that are sleeved because they're rare. I'm looking at the magnet switches. I'm looking at the cosmic switch, the uh, chicken nuggets from, from force. I'm looking at my wallet, my keys. Uh, It's just a mess. And I feel like that's part of the reason that I don't feel super psyched to to come here and edit videos. (laughs) Like this is my space and I, and I feel cluttered. I don't like sitting in it as much because it feels cluttered. And so just be more organized in terms of files, in terms of 
stuff on my desk in terms of like the entire room, my stream background, I get really depressed about because sometimes it doesn't look great. Uh, just be more organized and stuff like that. Number nine is a full armored cosplay. I've done cosplays. Now I want to be a common rider. Now I want to be a super a sentai warrior. I, I want to do a full armored cosplay. My big goal, if I get really specific with it, I want to be Zen Kaiser at Power Morphicon this year. I don't know how. I don't know. I'm going to make it happen. I want to be Zen Kaiser at Power Morphicon. If I could do two armored cosplays, that would be great. But literally, I just need to be Zen Kaiser. I have the helmet already. I need to figure out the rest of the suit. It's it's it 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 it's in my blood. <laughs> Oh, I have the memorial gearlinger now too. So it's in it's it's in the process, but I don't have that much time to figure it out because Power Morphicon is in June, July, July, I think. Uh, and number ten, the final goal for twenty twenty four is recover. It just says recover, and on the base level, um, I was telling you I probably tore my ACL earlier. And I would like to recover from that. If it is an ACL after surgery, it's like nine months to a year recovery time. So I want to get that out of the way as soon as possible so I can go back to being my 100% self because we've got one body and we might as well use it as much as we can before we leave this world. Um, so I would like to enjoy my body again and, and all the athleticism and stuff that comes with that. But also... My heart just hurts this year. My heart hurts. My brain hurts. I feel like I have been tossed away more this year by people I loved than any other year of my life. I feel like I've been beaten down by life this year more than any other year of my life. Um, I feel like I've been beaten down by myself this year more than any other year of my life. And I don't want to do that next year. I want to be happy. I want to try to be happy more. I want to recover this soul that I have in me. And whether that means like figuring out uh, therapy more, going back to therapy, figuring out um, new hobbies, new things that I find joy in, new people, friends, all that good stuff. I, I, I want to recover this soul of mine um because it is a beautiful one and i believe that wholeheartedly i believe that i have a lot a lot a lot of love to give to the world and a lot of creativity to give to the world and i think they go hand in hand i think my creativity has very much been affected and hampered this year because my heart is hurt because my brain is hurt. Um, and there's multiple reasons why that is a thing. There's multiple instances. It's not just one singular thing. It's a lot of things built up over time. But I think I'm ready to, to, to figure it out. I spent a lot of time this year wallowing on it, especially at the end of the year. Um, the seasonal depression rolled in pretty hard. I spent a lot of time at the beginning of the year wallowing on it and the end of last year wallowing on it um and i'm ready to i'm ready to take that turn and figure out what's next for me um yeah i don't know what else to say this has already gone on far longer than i originally planned it to i know you guys come to the podcast to listen to me talk with my friends which is what it's going to be more of next year i promise um i want to get more creatives on next year more people not just video content creators but musicians and uh con goers and cosplayers and all that good stuff people that uh, are really fun to talk to and that i like talking to like i said two hours uh, a month is a big commitment to some people uh or two hours like once is a big commitment to some people and I thank everyone who's been on the podcast and done it this year with me, even though like half of their conversations will not be heard by a ton of people. But if you want to hear it, go to togutrash.tv for the premium episodes. They are all fantastic. All of my guests have been amazing. When I talked about that, like shallow collaboration, that is not what this podcast is. I have had the best time this year 
doing this podcast with people, getting to know people better and creating these bonds with not only the people that I'm talking to, but with you guys, the support that I've gotten from people that go on Twitter or message me or go on Instagram and get like, Hey, I'm listening to the Togu trash podcast. I love this part, or I loved this part, or, or this part was really insightful, or, Hey, I just listened to five episodes and I'm enjoying it a lot. Or I just discovered this podcast and I'm enjoying it a lot. It means the world to me because this is the one thing I do that I don't niche down. YouTube and Twitter are, or new YouTube, Twitch and Twitter are very niche down to like, all right, got to focus on Tokusatsu because that's what those algorithms are. And this podcast doesn't have an algorithm. It's just, if you find me, you find it. So I appreciate you sticking around for me, sticking around for my friends that I'm interested in talking to and gaining something from that, or just gaining a little entertainment on your drive home. Um, it very much means a lot to me. I'm getting a little more uh, emotional than I thought I would of all this. But like I said, this is the end of the year. It is now New Year's Eve. 2023 is coming to an end. Um, whatever you did this year, be proud of it. Whatever you didn't do this year, you will figure it out next year. Uh, I will figure it out next year. We'll do this together like i said if you made a goals list while listening to this or turn this off and go make one uh send it to me let me know your goals um thank you for this ride i will talk to you next year